Welcome back. Today I'm going to be tying up the Barnes Special. This fly was created by C. Lowell Barnes. Mr. Barnes was a main guide from the Sebago Lakes region. I've started some white 210 UTC thread on the hook shank, snip off the tag, and I'll stop here at the barb and I'll grab a 30 pound test piece of monofilament. I've pre-cut this to about three inches long. I'm just gonna secure this with some thread wraps under the hook shank and make sure that it's riding straight with the hook. And then I'll finish securing it on here. Now I'll spiral wrap down to the barb again. The next step is to tie in the tail. So I'll grab a jungle cock cape and grab some body feathers here. Sometimes on the side you can find some body feathers with a nice white stripe down the center. I prefer those ones for this pattern. So I'll grab two of those and I'll start stripping the fluff off the bottom here. And I'll take them and put, whoop. And now I'll take them and put both of them together and make sure the fibers are even here. So I'll set them on top. I'm going to tie them in together. And you can see I like to tie into the fibers a little bit. Sometimes if you just tie in the bare stem, uh, the feathers have a tendency to spin around a little bit more. So I'll just take a few wraps over the top here to secure the tail. To secure the tail and while I'm here I'll also snip off these stems you could tie these in the whole length if you wanted and I almost forgot to tie in the rib so I'll set that on top now and wind forward I've got to come back with the flat silver tinsel anyway so I'll tie in this oval silver tinsel up to the hook eye now I'll grab my flat silver tinsel, start tying this down. Once I get down to the barb here, I'll start wrapping. So I'll grab my flat silver tinsel even turns one in front of the other and once I get down here I'll just bind down the tinsel a few turns in front and behind and snip it off now I'm gonna grab the oval silver tinsel and rib this open spiral wraps forward And once you get up here to the head, just bind down the material and snip it off. Lots of people like to tie this with a red head here on the rear hook as well as the front hook, but I, I don't mind leaving the rear hook white. So I'll just finish this up with a few half hitches. Come in and snip the thread off. Take this out of the vise and make room for the front hook. So I've got my size 6 nymph streamer hook in the vise. So I'll be winding on the same thread as the rear hook. Snip that tag off, then I'll come in with the rear hook, set this on top here. And always stop halfway through, because this is the only opportunity that you'll have to make sure both hooks are riding straight with one another.
Once you get down here to the head, start with the oval silver tinsel and wrap down. Once you get down here to the barb of the hook, tie in the flat silver tinsel. And wind that up. Start winding forward. I was trying to figure out exactly when this fly was created, but that's one thing that's really difficult to find is information like that on flies, especially old ones like this. Uh, I know this was featured in some uh, fly tying books from the 50s, so it's definitely older than 1950s. So I'll just bind that down and snip it off. I'm going to come in with my uh, rib here, start wrapping that, open spiral wraps forward. And bind it down. All right, I'm going to snip that off, put a few turns of thread over this to secure it, and then I'll throw a couple half hitches in. I'm going to switch the thread over. Um, so I'll snip this off before I switch threads. Now's a great time to make sure that your rear hook is properly head cemented. Uh, I like to go ahead and coat the whole entire body with two coats of Sally Hansen's. I feel that doubles the durability of these flies. All right, so the bodies have dried. I'm going to come back with some red UTC thread and 70 denier. Now I'll come in with some bucktail. I'm going to need some white and some red bucktail. I'll start with the red, pull out all the short fuzzy fibers here and tie in a very sparse amount. Just set it on top, take a few turns forward and then bring the thread back. Same thing with the white. Grab a pinch, pull out the short and fuzzies, set it on top. A few turns in front, make sure the material looks good. And then I'll take some uh, stronger wraps to really bind down the material. Come in and snip this off. Whoops, I got the thread a little bit. I'll clean that up in a second. So now it's time to form the wing. I've got two yellow saddle hackles and two grizzly saddle hackles. The yellow will go down first and the grizzly hackle will go down over that. It'll look something like this. So now I'll do my other side. I've got a yellow and a grizzly hackle paired up. And here's all four of them together set on top. This is about what the wing should look like when it's finished. So I'm going to glue these together. I'm going to grab some Duco cement here. I'm going to put a drop at the base of the yellow feather and then set the grizzly on top and stick them together. I'm going to do that to both sides. So they've got these two pairs glued up. I'm going to snip this uh, fuzz off the head here. It's kind of bothering me. All right, now the glue has dried on the feathers. I'm going to come in and tie them in at the same time. So I'll check the length one final time before I tie it in. That looks good. So I'll pinch it just behind the head. Take a few turns forward. 
and I'm getting awful close to this hook eye. Um, it's worth mentioning that there's still a collar to be tied in, so make sure you leave plenty of room for that. Then you can either fold your stems back or snip them off. I'm going to snip them off. All right, so now I'll clean this up a little bit with some red thread and get ready to tie the collar in. If I can just level this out a little bit, it will tie in easier. And you can throw a whip finish in here if you're worried about your work coming undone. So I'm going to grab uh, a white feather from an India hen. Just going to pull a feather off this cape here. Any webby white feather should do. Just grab a small one like this. And you can check the length by just holding the longer fibers up. So I want those longer ones. I don't want anything shorter than that. Put all the shorter fibers up towards the tip of the feather. And pull the longer ones down. Then I'll come in with my scissors. And snip a little triangle in here like this. And you can see the curves going down. That's how I want to tie it in. So I'll set this right at the rear of the head here. Take a loose turn over the top. And now really bind that down. Bring my thread back up so it doesn't slip off on me. So I'll grab some hackle pliers here. And I'll grab the stem here. I'm just going to wrap this around underneath and use my other hand to pull the fibers back. And just keep doing that and pulling the fibers back like a traditional collar on a wet fly. Once you get a few turn, two or three turns in there, start binding this down with a thread. You can either break or come in and snip that stem off. And that's it. Now it's time to build up the head and that will be a finished fly. So just level this out. Come in with my whip finish tool and make a couple neat whip finishes. And snip the thread off. Now come in with a head cement of your choice here and hit this head. So there it is guys, the finished fly, the tandem barn special. Gotta love that collar. That's definitely one of the uniquest features of this fly because it creates turbulence in the water. Uh, these feather wing streamers are built to cut through the water with ease. You know, when you throw this collar on here, you're really disturbing the water, making a much bigger wave with the fly. And, uh, you know, fish pick up on vibrations. So that's one theory on why this fly works so well. Uh, the color scheme is suggestive of a yellow perch or other small bait fish. I'm sure some of you have already fished this fly and had success with it. If you haven't, give it a shot. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments. If you learned something, hit the like button. I always appreciate you guys watching. More videos to come in the future. So if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time.